Today we're going to talk a little cryptocurrency. Well, we're not actually going to talk about crypto, but what we're going to talk about is how you can take control of your crypto assets and self-custody them rather than keep them on an exchange with something like a Ledger Nano S+. Plus. If you're looking for a crypto expert, you can find about a million of them on YouTube, but this video is designed for the beginner and I want to explain to you what a hardware wallet is, why you might want to use one or at least know how to use one, and then how to go about setting something like this up. Welcome to Sneaky Pete's Product Reviews. Let's start right at the top. What is a hardware wallet? Well, the easiest way to think about it is a hardware wallet is a way that you can self custody or control your own crypto assets rather than relying on keeping them on an exchange. If you buy and keep your crypto assets on an exchange like Coinbase, for example, then those assets are going to live on Coinbase. If something's to happen to you or your account or even to Coinbase, you could lose assets to all the crypto that you have in there. So if you leave your crypto on Coinbase, then Coinbase is going to be the custodian of the assets, not you. So why exactly do you want one? Well, with a hardware wallet like this, it allows you to take those crypto assets off of an exchange and to instead store them on this wallet. And it gets a little convoluted as it's not really stored on this wallet, it's still on the blockchain, but this gives you possession of your keys so you have control over your cryptocurrency. If you've heard about companies like Celsius going into bankruptcy, they simply froze all the assets that people had stored on their exchange and you simply can't withdraw your assets. So if you had half a Bitcoin or God forbid a full Bitcoin on there earning staking rewards, your Bitcoin is now gone and there's very little chance you are ever going to get it back, unfortunately. A hardware wallet solves that problem as when you move your assets onto the wallet, then it takes the exchange issue completely out of the question. Now, I'm not saying that keeping it on an exchange is bad, but you should just know the potential risks of doing so. Even if you're comfortable with keeping your crypto on an exchange, I would highly recommend that you know how to move it off an exchange onto a hardware wallet should you ever need to do so in the future. It's really a crypto literacy sort of thing. This is baseline knowledge that you need to have. Here's one way to think about it. When you keep your crypto on an exchange, it's similar to keeping your money in a bank account. The only difference is the big banks are way more regulated, so you don't really run a risk of your money kind of going missing, but crypto still isn't there yet, so it's just a little bit more risky. Going with that same comparison, taking your crypto off of an exchange onto a hardware wallet is like withdrawing your cash from the bank. But just keep in mind that has risk of its own. If you have cash all of a sudden, you can lose that cash, you can mishandle the cash, whereas when it's in the bank, you don't have to worry about that. Putting your assets onto a hardware wallet is kind of like taking your money out and putting it into a mattress because you don't trust the banks. For some people, this feels way more safe and an obvious choice, whereas other people are going to feel way more comfortable with the bank controlling their assets and they don't have to worry about making some kind of mistake or otherwise losing them. Most importantly, you have to treat your crypto wallet and your seed phrase like cash. If you lose your seed phrase or your wallet and someone can get into your wallet, consider your crypto gone. Don't tell anyone you have a wallet, don't tell them what's in your wallet, and figure out a good safe place to keep it. Today I'm going to be showing you the Ledger Nano S Plus. Ledger makes the most popular hardware wallets on the market, and the new Nano S Plus was only recently released. I just feel way more comfortable going with a large established company for something like a hardware wallet rather than a startup. I will include an affiliate link below so you can buy this off Amazon, but it's not a terrible idea to buy your hardware wallet directly from the manufacturer or something they have listed on their website of an authorized reseller. If someone was to get a compromised drive in your hands and then you set it up and move assets to it, they could steal the assets if you have a hacked product. But if you're not as paranoid as I am, then you can find them on Amazon, online, and in a bunch of physical retailers. Ledger only recently released the Nano S Plus, and this replaces the much more simplistic Nano S. This is a nice upgrade, and it makes it a much more functional and modern product. When you look at the Nano S Plus, it's going to remind you of a USB thumb drive. And until you fold the buttons and screen out, it really does look like a normal thumb drive. It's super small and light, measuring in at 62 by 17 by 8 millimeters and weighing only 21 grams. The brushed stainless steel outer housing protects the inner plastic body and screen. The Nano S Plus has a USB-C connector and it doesn't have Bluetooth, so that means you can't use it with Bluetooth on your phone like you can with the larger and more expensive Nano X. With the Nano S Plus, you're going to plug this into and manage everything with a computer. It does say it works with Android and not iOS, so it's possible you can use this with an Android phone, but I just don't have Android, so I can't confirm that for you. Essentially, the workflow is plug the Nano S Plus into the computer, unlock the wallet, and then use the app on the computer in conjunction with the wallet to complete all the operations. It includes a USB-C to USB-A or standard USB cable. You get three seed phrase recovery sheets, as well as a keychain strap. 
The Ledger Nano S Plus allows you to put 5,500 different crypto assets on here, and you can have 100 at any one time on here. Honestly, if you're invested in more than 100 crypto projects at any one time, I think you should probably dump a couple off your portfolio. The Nano S Plus also lets you manage, visualize, and send NFTs. This is a huge update compared to the last version, and if you're into NFTs, being able to store them on the same crypto wallet that you have your other assets on is a huge bonus, and it makes managing things way easier. So who's something like this good for? Well, if you're invested in crypto assets and if you have a physical computer to plug this into, I think the Nano S Plus is going to be a good choice. Ledger makes super easy to use hardware wallets, and the fact that you can put up to 100 different assets at any one time, as well as NFTs, makes this a perfect choice for anyone invested in virtually any digital asset. Even if you only buy one of these to move a small amount of crypto, just for proof of concept so you know how to do it, I think it's a worthwhile investment then, because otherwise you are completely at the mercy of someone else to manage your money. If you plan on managing your hardware wallet and crypto portfolio through a mobile operating system only, you definitely want to get the Nano X as that has Bluetooth and allows you to use it with an app on your phone. I wanna take a few minutes here and show you the setup process of how you're gonna actually go ahead and get one of these set up. When you buy the Ledger Nano S Plus, it's gonna come wrapped in plastic, but I've already opened mine up here. This is the retail box that it comes in. Gonna go ahead and open that. Trust yourself, see, trust yourself. Know how to do this at the very least. That's what it should say, but you should trust yourself. So that's what you're gonna see inside the Ledger Nano S Plus. That's the Ledger Nano S Plus itself, and that's your secret recovery sheet. Go ahead and take these things out of here. It's a good idea just to go right here, ledger.com slash start, and it'll walk you through the entire process. Or you can just watch this video, and I'll walk you through it as well. A lot of gear here. This is going to be some more instruction manual, getting started guide. We're going to want that. And then in here, what we're going to find is going to be our cable and our keychain and all that sort of thing. Open that up. So there's our USB-C cable that's gonna plug from our ledger into the computer, and that's going to be a keychain little dongle if you wanna hold that on your keychain. It's gonna go ahead and fold out the ledger. It's got a little screen protector covering the screen. Now, as you see, this doesn't turn on, right? I'm like, what, what's going on? Why can't I turn this on? This is only powered by your computer. So this only gets its power from this USB-C cable, which we're gonna plug to the side of that. That's in there tight. Now I'm gonna go ahead and plug this end here into my computer. Okay, so let's plug that in. It's gonna come to life. Ledger, welcome to Ledger Nano S Plus. Press right button to continue. Download Ledger Live. Now I have Ledger Live. I'm gonna go ahead and open that on my computer. Okay, so here's a little instruction. Start Ledger Live for help during setup. We can either set this up as a new device, restore from recovery phrase, which is what you're gonna do if you already have a crypto wallet set up, but we're gonna be setting this up as a new device. So choose a pin with four to eight digits. You can only do four if you want, but you can do all the way up to eight. I don't think it's a bad idea to do more than four. And anyone watching this, I'm not actually setting this wallet up. I'm gonna reset this from scratch there. So you can try, but you can't get into here, I promise. So let's make this really easy for the video. One, two, three, four. So as you see, left and right is going to change it. And I press both at the same times to secure. So we're just gonna go really easy here. We're gonna go one, two, three, four, worst password ever. Say, okay. Now confirm pin. One, two, three, four, confirm. Okay, now write down your recovery phrase. This is probably the most critical part. You have to do this properly. This is going to give you 24 words, okay? Your device will generate 24 words. They are your recovery phrase. This is your only backup to restore your accounts if needed. So this is the backup to restore your accounts if you need be. The hardware wallet doesn't have your crypto. Your recovery phrase more has your crypto, but essentially keep your hardware wallet, keep your recovery phrase to restore it if you need to. So write it down on your recovery sheet in the correct order. Press both buttons to continue. So first word, combine. So I'm gonna take my recovery sheet here. We're gonna open this up. So these are the recovery sheets. As you can see, it has three. So this is just backup. Here is one, here's two for backup. You should definitely just make sure you manage this properly, whether or not you wanna save this or you wanna transfer this to something else, but just make sure you retreat this as cash. This essentially is your wallet. 
Let's go ahead and open this up here. So that's where you're gonna write the 24 numbers. So our first word was combine. We're gonna write that in number one. So he says write word number one combine. So we go to number one, and please don't make fun of my penmanship. I would really try hard if this was going to be my actual password. So once I got that, go to word two. Word two, cherry. So now we're going to go to number two. See, I almost went to three. Word two, cherry. Okay, so now I'm going to go through the rest of these and just fast forward this. You don't need to see me do all these. And I can do all 24 words. And here's the last one property so there we go you can see a 24 word recovery phrase again i'm not putting any crypto in here you can put this in wallet and see if there's anything in here there won't be any crypto but this is what you need to protect this is how you can restore all of your crypto if you ever lose misplace or damage that wallet you can recover all of your crypto as long as you have this and no one else has it so now it's getting us to confirm our words we're going to confirm our recovery this is a very important part make sure you do this properly Confirm one property. Well, that's not it. It's combine. Hold on a second here. So we're going to go till we find our word and then we're going to select it. So this is trying to help you. Word two. Word two is cherry, right? So we go word two, cherry. Word three, pulp, right? So you're going to verify what word is in what position for all 24 to make sure you know you have this incorrectly. So I'm going to fast forward while I do the rest of these. And then the last word, property. Okay, put that in. Your recovery phrase is set. Keep it in a secure place. So what this has now done is this has verified, helped us to verify that we have the right word in the right order. This just tested us and we got the correct word in the correct order. So we know our recovery phrase is set in place. We're gonna put this somewhere secure. If lost, stolen or forgotten, all your assets will be irredeemably lost. Take this seriously, guys. Never share it with anyone. Ledger will never ask you for it. Don't get fooled in any phishing scams. Press both buttons to continue. Processing. Your device is ready. There we go. Go to dashboard. Let's go to the dashboard. Okay, so we're now at the point here where this is set up. We have one of two options here. I want to give you guys two options. This is set up and ready to go to install apps. See, it says use manager in Ledger Live to install apps and more. So we're gonna use Ledger Live on our computer to install the apps. The apps are what we're gonna use to put Bitcoin versus Ethereum versus Cardano. Each of them are gonna have their own app. So we're gonna use Ledger Live on the computer to actually manage those. And then there's one more step I wanna go over that you can do here if you want, right? If you wanna be really, really paranoid, what you're going to do is you're going to hold these two buttons you're going to go into the settings here. We're going to find the settings, general, let's go security, All right? And we would go reset device. Now, why would we want to reset the device we just set up? Well, the reason being is we would go reset device and then when we set this up, we wouldn't set it up as a new device. We would restore it from our recovery phrase. And then what we would do is we would put in this recovery phrase here and if it's restored and everything's good, then we is it's just another way to again verify you have this incorrectly, right? Because you're gonna set this up from scratch. You say, okay, it worked perfectly. So had this had a bunch of crypto on it and I had to set it up from scratch, it's still going to work perfectly. So it's an extra step you can use for verification. You don't need to do it. As of now, this is set up and it's ready to be used with Ledger Live. And that's what you're gonna be doing to manage all the actual crypto itself. Overall, I feel like the Ledger Nano S Plus is the perfect choice for a first time crypto wallet or for somebody with a physical computer who wants an easy to use and understand wallet so they can self custody their own assets. The upgrades they have made with this new Plus version are massive. The ability to hold 100 assets at one time is huge compared to the handful that you could hold with the Ledger Nano S. Also, the fact that you can store and manage NFTs on this is a big change. I would much prefer to have one or two safe wallets to keep my stuff on rather than having it on a bunch of different exchanges. And again, there's nothing wrong with keeping your crypto assets or your NFTs on an exchange, but at the very least, you should know how to take them off of that exchange and put them on something like a hardware wallet so that you can have control. 
I feel like not knowing how to get your crypto off of an exchange and onto your hardware wallet is like opening up a bank account, putting in a whole bunch of money and having no idea how to take your money out of that account. When you first start transferring things onto a hardware wallet, it is definitely going to be scary and it's going to seem a little bit confusing, but it's truly not that hard. And once you do it a couple of times, you're gonna feel way better about the whole crypto experience. I hope this video helped explain what a hardware wallet is, why you might wanna use one or at least know how to use one, and then gave you a run through of the setup process itself. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you soon with another video.